I am autistic. I was diagnosed when I was 23. I self-diagnosed about a year before that um, because I began researching autism, what it was, Asperger's, and I started to see a lot of stuff I'd never seen before that I related to that I suddenly found words for. And it was joining the autistic community on Instagram that really made me understand what autism actually is. So since then, I, in the first time in my, for the first time in my life, I have um, understood who I am, why my brain works, how my thinking works, the way that I process things. Oh, I do this. I never knew that that was uh, for a reason. Um, and it's amazing. Like my mom tells me that she understands me for the first time since I was a little girl. And so autism has become so important to me. But before I knew I was autistic, I thought so many things were wrong with me. And so I want to explain something that I call autistic identity. So to understand that, I want to first explain what autism really is, because it's not the diagnostic criteria and the negative terminology that they use. Uh, as soon as you Google autism, it comes up with a serious developmental disorder that impairs the ability to communicate and interact. I don't feel impaired. I'm, I'm, I'm not intrinsically impaired. National Institute of Mental Health says difficulty with communication and interaction with other people. Symptoms that hurt the person's ability to function properly in school, work, and other areas of life. Thanks for letting me know that I don't function properly. Like, no. The, even WebMD, it, it just... Autism Spectrum Disorder. Can I just say, I am not disordered. I don't feel like I have a disorder. I have a neurological difference. The five neurological differences being social, emotional, behavioral, cognitive, and sensory. These differences and how they interact with each other and interconnect is what makes the autism spectrum a spectrum, not a spectrum, a spectrum. And the way that they impact each other differently is what makes each autistic person different. And so you can't categorize autistic people into this small set of criteria when we make up a much bigger portion of society than you realize. And why some of us are more higher support needs, which needs more people to help with more things in their life, or lower support needs, which is me, because I need less people to help with less things in my life. Um, but everyone needs support. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And don't ever let anyone shame you for where you are on the spectrum or question you for where you are on the spectrum because it's your community and you get to shape it and you get to build it and you get to do what you want with it. I saw the autistic community on Instagram and saw people doing YouTube videos and explaining what autism is and owning that, oops, <laughs> owning this autistic, like this culture, this presence. And I wanted to do that and I wanted to make it open for other people to do that. So that's why I'm filming. So autistic identity of itself is not using autism to define yourself. It's using it to accept yourself. So accepting yourself starts with relearning and then redirecting. So first relearning, relearning how you authentically feel, not how other people tell you you should be feeling or how you think, oh, I should be feeling this way, how you really truly have and process your emotions. Um, relearning what you enjoy doing without feeling shame or ostracized for it. Relearning how you sensory process. Relearning how to see yourself for who you are. So redirecting your life with what you learn about being autistic so that you can maintain emotional health. I maintain emotional health best, not when I am going out and doing a bunch of things and talking to a bunch of people and feeling fulfilled by that. I feel more fulfilled laying in my little sensory corner over here, reading and playing with squishy toys, you know? Like, own that. Don't, don't let anybody tell you, that's dumb, or why do you do that? That's not what you should be doing. You're too old for this. Just own it, man. This also comes with setting new boundaries. Um, there's a lot of boundaries that I have that I didn't have before that I now feel better. Just overall, my overall quality of life is so much better 
now that I have incorporated taking time to play with stim toys. I have a whole collection of things that I never thought I would want. But now that I've tried it and being open to new opportunities to find who I am and what I like and what I'm interested in, that's my favorite thing to do now. Do what you are naturally inclined to do. Even if it doesn't feel like you're naturally getting the hang of it yet, even if it feels like you're just faking it and this isn't really me, just keep pushing through it. Remember how you felt when you were passionate about something and run towards that. Seek it out. And stop looking at the negatives for a minute and see how you can utilize your strengths. Because when you find your strengths, and believe me, there are many strengths that you have, even if you don't know it yet, you will begin to see that some weaknesses aren't even weaknesses at all. It's just that you were looking at them in a wrong way. You know, they say your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Screw that. Your greatest weakness is your greatest strength. And let me interrupt and say, some weaknesses are just the result of you not treating yourself right. So if you're pushing yourself, then you are not functioning the way that you need to function. You won't be so overwhelmed and overworked, and you'll have more time to pursue the things that you are strong at and the things that do make you uniquely who you are. Autism is a catalyst through which you understand yourself. So when you understand autism makes you who you are, then it becomes part of your identity. And you define yourself through how you experience life. And so begin defining autism through how you experience your life. So I thought I'd show you some of the ways that I embrace my autistic identity. Stimming is how I process information and how I regulate my emotions. So at the end of a long day, I will just sit down in my little corner and just squish, 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 squish. I love this one because it rolls. You've seen all my stim toys on Instagram and it's how I have fun. Creating a lifestyle that makes me emotionally healthy. I have a notebook. I write down everything that I do, list things, uh, draw little pictures. I have schedules. I do everything that I know that I need to do to function correctly. Being open about saying I am autistic. I bring it into a regular conversation all the time. And embracing the autistic community as my community and connecting with other people to form the kind of culture that I want to be around and involved in and advocating for the community, being involved in the autistic community, whether it's on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, all together in real life. I want you to know that I am here. I am visible. I am not ashamed of my autism and neither should you be. And I want to bring us all together because we are stronger together and diversity is a beautiful, great thing. I hope you all enjoyed my video. It's January and I hate it because it's cold. It gets dark at 6 p.m. and I have no sunlight and natural light to film with. But I'm going to be continuing with this YouTube channel so that I've said it already. Everything that I just said. That's why I want to continue my YouTube channel. So I hope y'all like me, <laughs> but if you don't, that's okay, because there's plenty of other YouTubers that you can go to. I'm new, I'm starting out, but I can learn, and the sun will come out soon. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!